Matt, just a quick fact for you, first of all. When it comes to active troops, that's boots on the ground ready to fight today, the Russian army is five times the size of the Ukrainian army. But when you factor in reserves and veterans willing to fight, that number comes down to three times the size. They'll be the types of things Moscow will be thinking about if it's considering a conventional ground invasion here in Ukraine. We spent the day about 15 miles from here on what could potentially become the front line, talking to soldiers, talking to volunteers. It is amazing what you can learn just hanging around a military checkpoint in this part of the world. This morning we drove out east of Mariupol towards the front line where sporadic fighting between Russian backed separatists and Ukrainian forces rumbles on. You know you're getting close when you're the only one on the road. This checkpoint as far as we're allowed to go today, one of several possible entry points if Russia decided to invade. So there are miles and miles of trenches like this one all along the front line, which is about five miles in that direction. And one of the factors, of course, when it comes to any potential invasion will be the weather. Um, the Russians will need the ground to be frozen, so they're waiting potentially for another couple of weeks before the ground is sufficiently hard for tanks to roll in. That's one of the factors needed to be considered if it came to a possible invasion. Today, about 100 miles east of where we are, beyond Donbass and into Russia, Russian troops launched combat readiness checks, which will last until the end of this week. Most military analysts agree that at the moment there aren't enough Russian troops bordering Ukraine if the plan was to take the whole country. Also, they're not yet in the types of formations analysts would expect immediately before a full-scale invasion. Although this could change, of course, quite quickly. On the Ukrainian front line in Luhansk, target practice diplomacy in the trenches. As global talk of war reaches fever pitch, Putin hasn't actually said that much about Ukraine for weeks, perhaps part of the strategy. If Moscow is considering a full-scale ground invasion, something else to consider. People like Irina. Part of a network of volunteers in Mariupol delivering supplies to the front line since 2014. Back then, it was bullets. Today, just bandages. Back in 2014, these boxes would be full of weapons or whatever you could bring to volunteer fighters on the front line. No, однозначно, потому что тогда армия была голая босая и без оружия. То есть, если возвращаться к 2014 году, то тогда если действительно все было совсем по-другому. Тогда это и везли больше гуманитарки, и гуманитарка была гораздо серьезнее. The Ukrainian army today is far better equipped and prepared than it was back then. Other possible front lines, though, have no checkpoints. The information war. Today, Ukrainian intelligence services arrested two men in the east of the country. They said they were part of a Russia-sponsored gang planning to attack Ukrainian infrastructure with a view to destabilizing the region. What concrete evidence do you have that these men were sponsored by Russia? Також були вилучені спеціальні технічні засоби радіочастотного пригнічення. After delivering the bandages, Irina brought us back into Mariupol to her husband's garage. Back in the day, they repaired military vehicles here for free. Perhaps the biggest consideration for Russia, if contemplating an attack, especially in the cities, the extent to which civic society would give Ukraine competitive advantage.